Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, yep, so tonight, glad to have you all on the inside, as usual. Hopefully, everything will flow properly tonight. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Last week we had some issues with um with uh internet connectivity. So hopefully that doesn't happen right now. I hope. Okay, yep, so, um, everybody, yes, you could share the link. And, um, I'll put it in WhatsApp group because I can. One of the mods will share the link. And then you can forward it to all your friends, all of her everywhere because um tonight will be fun we'll be doing it we'll be doing our interactive quiz and you all will actually be the students because you know what's happened right when teachers make quizzes <laughs> they'll be like please enter your first name and then it says must be a number it's kind of like uh Teacher, did you think about that before? So I'm just basically trying out a new um a new quiz making application and we will see how that goes. Alright, glad to have you all on the inside, all newcomers, people who've never been on your live before, if you're a teacher, if you're a parent, um Welcome, 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 and everybody, everybody else. All right, so the link is in the chat there. You should know to share by now. You should just press the share button and you could share it to WhatsApp, share it to whoever. If you're on a phone, if you're on a computer, you could take the link and you could share it to Facebook, you could share it to wherever. Let me welcome my mods as usual. Um, Ren, Jared, Javish, and... Those are the mods that are here tonight. No, and Gio here, Gio here. I've seen Gio. Gio is there. All right. So the mods, the moderators in the chat, they usually answer your questions. They usually share links. They usually tell you where to go to for different things. And um, they're, they're pretty smart IT students of mine who, um, who cause me to lie very much in a game called Among Us. But long story short. Welcome. All right, everybody. So we're going to go through two things tonight. Um, the first thing is you have, um, you've been teaching online for about six weeks now. And um, everybody, for the most part, the, the most popular platform is Google Classroom. And everybody uses that, um, basically. What's, what we're going to go through tonight is the problem that some teachers are having, which is with their storage in Google in Google Drive. So I'll explain how the storage works in in um in Google, and um, that should that should avoid some of the issues that we may have had. Google is a one. Okay, thank you very much, Google, for telling me that. I appreciate it a whole lot. You can never save. <laughs> that is not no no that's me being very um pro practicing proper sneezing techniques aha all right i just post into my facebook page just for the people that care all right so i trust you would have shared it with your friends and stuff and your co-workers and in your school whatsapp groups and all that stuff 
And we're ready to go. All right, so let's go. Ah, you ready? If you're ready. Well, normally I'll tell the students for a thumbs up in the chat, but I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure how strong are the, um, the emoji game is. All right, don't forget to like. Remember, you have to like the video. More likes will make it propagate to more people that matter. That's how, that's how the algorithm works. From my IT teacher's perspective, I understand. When the likes go up, the video gets presented to people more. And the more people that need it, they get to see it. Cool. Good. Great. So we're going to, we're going to deal with storage tonight. All right. So I have, to, I have to get the whiteboard out for you all. Because this is... um. Hey, hey, look, thumbs up and thing coming up. Right. So let's get the whiteboard out. All right. So what happens is um, when you use your Gmail account, which is your default account, Gmail, I should put it in red. I'll put it in red because red will be easier for you to understand. It will associate better. So I'll put red, right? So when you use your at Gmail account, your at Gmail account has the ability to um, use many different um, resources. And one of those resources is Classroom. The other is actually Mail. Then you also have um, Photos. And then all of these things, all of these things that you collect here, Gmail, Photos or whatnot, they store in a place called um so a place called drive. Right. So your Google Drive literally holds all of those, all of the information that is created in any one of these places. Now one of the problems is that um many teachers think when they get a Google Classroom account that the classroom is actually just um a self-encapsulated place that all the data that you store inside there will stay inside the classroom really and truly no all your data when you store it anywhere it's classroom plus gmail plus photos and anything that you store will all store will all be stored inside this place called google drive and a lot of teachers have been um not complaining but they've been saying that their drive is becoming full or they are um they run out of storage or they can't upload data because sometimes you'll be trying to upload something into your classroom but the data won't go because your google drive is literally full so the way to solve that or the way to at least diagnose that is to go and check your google drive storage so this is me going to show you how to check your google drive storage so to check your google drive storage you could once you're logged in with your gmail account Logged in, whatever Gmail account you have, you could go to Google, just search Google Storage, right? And they will send you to a page that looks like this. Don't go to the first one, that's Cloud Storage. You see the next one, Drive Storage Google or Google One Storage, right? Because Google Storage um, brand is under something called Google One, you basically go into Google One Storage. But you can just search Google Storage and you'll find, right? So you click there and you will see your account and you'll see how much gigabytes you've used up from all of your accounts. All right. Now, let me, let me just go to my drive first so you could see what it looks like on the left-hand side. I hope there's nothing incriminating here. Just now, let me make sure. If I all the Google Drive and, you know, all my business get put out and all that stuff. I really, really, really want that to happen. Alright, yeah, I can have it. Alright, so on the bottom left hand side of the Google Drive, you see, that you see this thing that says storage. Right? And the video storage will say like 9.1 gigabytes of 15 years. By default, the default amount of storage that you get on your Google Drive when you register is 15 gigabytes now for most people 15 gigabytes is not a problem not going to be an issue you will basically use it because look at me 
I have the world of stuff, but I only use up 9.1 of my 15 gigabytes. And I've been using Google Classroom for as long as Google Classroom has been available in Trinidad and Tobago. So I have classrooms with all kind of data, all kind of stuff. I archive classroom, classrooms, all kind of stuff. And only use 9.1 gigabytes of the 15. Which is because I kind of learned how to manage the storage. So when you go to one.google.com, which is the storage, which is what I just showed you, just Google, Google storage, and you should be able to find it. You will see that you have 15 gigabytes of free storage, and then it will say your storage is, um, what was saying here? Your storage is shared across Google Drive, Gmail, and Google Photos. So which is exactly what I showed you all here. Right? But now we have classroom involved there. Just now. Didn't mean to do that. Come back up. Come back up. Right, good, yeah. Back up. Right. Okay. Right. But now we have classroom involved. And the stuff that you put in classroom automatically goes in Google Drive in a folder named classroom. Just in case you didn't know. Right? So if you go to your Google Drive and you look and you you see a folder named classroom, every single classroom you've created will be stored inside it. Right? Right, so we go in, we're good. You will see the first thing that they will point you to is get more storage. Why do they want to point you to get more storage? Well, because getting more storage is how they make money, right? So you could pay for more storage and you could get more storage if you need it. But if you don't need it, you'll get to this part here where you will see the breakdown of your storage, which is Google Drive, my Google Drive is 5.59 gigabytes and my Gmail is 3.4 gigabytes and you see my Google Photos, zero gigabytes. How is that possible? Well, there is a way that you could upload things to Google Photos and the photos will go up for free. All you have to do is go to photos.google.com and it will create like a photo album for you. And every photo that you have, you could put it up there and it doesn't count against your storage once you store it via Google Photos. So if you want to um, clean up stuff, one of the first things that you should do is check to see if your Google Drive has a lot of photos in it. And if it has a lot of photos in it, then you should go to photos.google.com and store those photos there instead because it won't count against your storage. But most of the times the biggest culprit to um, your online storage would be your Gmail account and the actual files you have in your Google Drive. And because remember, Google Classroom is a folder inside your Google Drive, that means you're going to have an issue when your classroom starts to fill up with stuff, right? So what's next? So they will see, they will show you different things, ways to use your account storage, you can sync media in Google Photos, store files, blah, blah. But this, this bottom part here is the important part. When you scroll down, it says, get your space back. See ways to free up space in Google Drive, Gmail, and Google Photos. So do I want to do that? Yes. Oh, well, I don't want to go down here and pay $1.99 a month. I could do that if I feel like it and get 100 gigabytes instead of 15 gigabytes. But you don't have to. If you can afford that, then no problem. That's all right. Probably one day I might have to do that when things get really big. But so far, I'm managing it well. This part here where it says free up account storage. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to click on free up account storage. And it will now say um, storage manager shows files that count towards your 15 gigabyte storage limit. So remember your storage limit is 15 gigabytes. Therefore, you are going to see which files are taking up all the space. So manage your account storage, it will check blah, blah, blah. So here's what it's going to show you. It's going to show you one. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Zooming, zooming. Right, first one, discarded items. It will show you deleted emails. Things that are in your trash, but they're taking up space and you are not using it. So it says, it could say review and free up 310 kilobytes. Now for those of us who don't understand storage in our computer, there are kilobytes. Then there are megabytes. And then there are gigabytes. So if something is in the kilobyte range, you really not to worry too much about that. If something is in the megabyte range, maybe think about it. If something is in the gigabyte range, then you have to ask yourself, all right, I, um, I think that I need to check this out. Right, so, so we're back to this. You will see review 310 kilobytes. So in my deleted emails, I really don't have anything stored there, any trash, because I probably just didn't. Yeah. Then I have spam emails. Emails that are marked as spam, they automatically go to a spam folder. And when you go to that spam folder, 
you don't see it because your spam your your, your um gmail is automatically going to throw it straight in spam and if it throws it straight in spam it may have big things in it so what you want to do is review it and check to see if this is in the megabytes or gigabyte region right most likely it's not going to be but then you're going to see deleted files in google drive google drive um google drive says that i have 399 kilobytes notice this kilobytes 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 do i have to worry about kilobytes no i don't have to then i have this part here called large items large items now would basically scan through all my storage and try to figure out what that was taking up a lot of space and look at this i have some images or stuff inside my um gmail that is taking up 2.4 gigabytes out of that 15. Now, these are emails with attachments. So, emails that have attached, large attachments, we don't really pay attention to for the most part because we just think attach something to that email and it just goes as an attachment. But really and truly, it counts against your storage. So, if you check your emails with large attachments, so if you have um, people sending you a lot of pictures, people sending you a lot of videos attached to emails and all that stuff, this will most likely be big. And your whole 15 gigabytes of Google storage will most likely be used up. So what you want to do is make sure you check this and say, okay, review 2.4 gigabytes. So if I wanted to, I could clean up 2.4 gigabytes of my um, storage by um, clicking right here. So if I click review and free up, it will carry me to um, all the different email, email accounts with the large attachments. And I'll just choose which ones. So let's say I wanted to delete this one. Yeah, let's say I want to delete that one, a ticket, and then I go up there and I press the delete thing, and then boom, and it says, I understand that once I delete it, it'll permanently delete. All right, cool. That's gone. That's one of them. So I freed up 4.3 megabytes. Now, because I zoomed in a lot, you will see all of them really close. But if I zoom out, it, will, it basically pulls out all the emails with all the pictures that you want to take, right? So that is the email, right? So email counts against it. So, um,. You'll have a lot of rubbish, <laughs> as somebody is saying. Yeah, you might have some rubbish there, some old, old emails that you never used before, and you don't care if it's there and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. Next one is large files. In your Google Drive folder, there will be a lot of large files, and most of the times, the large files are videos. So if you look at mine, you will see that I have a lot of videos that are taking up space, and they're taking up 5.6 gigabytes. So if I click on review, it will show me all the videos in chronological order, and it'll show me the size. So some of these videos I actually want to be here because they are backup videos of some of my classes. But I chose to put them there. And because I chose to put them there, uh, I want them to stay. But these videos here with um, random stuff, why is it there? Do I Did I put it there? I don't know. So I'll just go through them and I'll delete them. Just like how you delete them on, a, on your phone, you can delete videos and clean, clear up space there. Now, what you all are going to realize, for those of you all who put videos up in Google Classroom, is that in a large file section... You will see a lot of the videos that children may have uploaded because sometimes we give assignments and we tell the children send send a video of your work but getting asking a child to send a video of, of the work is cool because you actually get to see a video but remember the file size of a video is way bigger than the file size of a picture so when you ask children to send videos or you yourself post videos inside your google classroom it's going to go in the large file section of um um you're going to the large file section of your google um drive so you click review you choose which ones you want to delete and then you delete it and then all of a sudden your 15 megabytes of space your storage um your storage will start to kind of go down um, if i wanted to i could have done it all right um last one will be large photos and videos well if you have photos or videos stored in google photos they will come up here also right Da, 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 da. All right, um, Alicia, you now seen all the videos here. Yeah. Tap on sorry. Liana Williams, can I download files? So let's get to some questions about this quickly before I head into the next section. Yeah, once you do this, you should be good. So let me see if I can get the chat up so that y'all could ask questions now because a lot of teachers have a lot of video files that they would have put up. But it didn't really it didn't, it didn't really dawn on you that you know this is going to be storage taking up storage space no it doesn't really hit you that i'll end up running out of storage because we think we're using an unlimited amount of storage but no we're not 
All right, that's now let's get any chat up so I could post the question, see the questions. All right, so let's see questions. Alicia Mohammed, yes, I know, seen all the videos. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you'll be surprised at how much things you have stored in the Google Drive and they don't, you didn't know that it was there. Good night. Oh, question Can you use the live email or you have to use a Gmail account for um? For Google Classroom, you have to use a Gmail account. So you can use a live email for that, for Google Drive. Google Drive must be centered around a Gmail-based account. Leanna Williams, can I download files before deleting? Yes, of course, you could download any file to your computer and then you could delete it from the cloud. Um, that's not a problem. That's easy. Um, Savitri so has excellent presentation skills. Easy to follow. Well, hey, thank you. Glad that you know. Um, or oh, thank you. Sorry. Alicia Spears. Thank you, sir. What an eye opener. Yes, you're welcome, Alicia. Right. So that's it for questions. All right, Alison Smith. If I post a link of a video in Google Classroom, will it affect my storage? No, because links are not stored on your Google Classroom. Links are stored somewhere else. So if you post a YouTube link, what you're really doing is you're, you're directing somebody to the YouTube page, the YouTube service not your page so let me see if i can illustrate that a little bit for you right so if you take a video from on your phone and then you upload it straight to your drive that counts against your storage right so that will take up a little space of storage in, in in your drive right and if you keep uploading videos it'll take up some more space and then you upload our next video more space more space until eventually you'll upload so much videos that it's taking up a lot of the space on your drive however if you post a link to a video, so if you post a link, the link will come up in blue. But the link doesn't take up space because what the link actually does is it actually points to, um, it actually points to YouTube. So the actual video is stored in YouTube and what you are doing is you are giving a link to this video inside your classroom. So you could, um, so it will... It will be like the link is in your classroom it bounces to it doesn't even go to drive it just bounces straight to youtube so it doesn't even affect your drive storage all of this here doesn't doesn't it doesn't happen the link just basically says all right i post a link in classroom the students watch it on youtube whereas if you post a direct video into your google drive when you when you put it in classroom they when they click on it they actually go into that video there so that's the that's the answer to that question um let's see Thanks, very helpful. So, awesome tip. Thank you. I just went from 92% full to 9.9. 9.19 storage. Very good. Um, what does it mean your OneDrive is full? Well, OneDrive is our next um, OneDrive is our next type of storage that's kind of like Google Drive, but OneDrive is linked with Microsoft. So, if you have a live account, if you have a Microsoft account or Outlook account or a live account, it will be like the same thing like um, Google Drive. So you could store things there if you want. I can't remember the default amount of storage that they give you in OneDrive. Um, I think it's 10, I think it's 15, I, I'm not too sure. But the thing is, all of them give you cloud storage, but it's limited. So we as teachers, we would be uploading a lot of content to our drive, but we have to remember that those things are counted against our storage. So there are certain, there are certain culprits that you have to worry about with your storage. If you're doing um, docs, sheets, and slides these things contribute zero to your storage docs sheet and slides they don't they don't they don't contribute anything to your storage at all those are free if you if you have um um doc x that's not wrong color if you have doc x um xls X and PowerPoint files. These do contribute, but not much. These files are not really that big. They don't really cause much of an issue. Then you get to the point where you have um, .jpg and .png. These will be medium. And then when you get to the video section now, when you have .mp4 and .mov and .video, 
anything video wise that is high so when you're doing your classrooms you have to remember okay if i if i just use google's built-in doc sheets and slides it wouldn't count against any storage if i use microsoft word stuff which is doc documents on oh, pdf also pdf pdf right if you have those files they won't contribute that much and then jpeg and png they will contribute medium and mp4s movies and videos they will contribute very high right Let's see it's good all right does that include google meet links as to as yeah google meet links don't store any information google meet is just a link to our, our service so that shouldn't be a problem question a live account will work um or oh, i must have a gmail account okay now yeah um if i download a file from google drive will the owner will the owner exactly who it is um i don't know it's i, I don't want to sound saying brian i'm not too sure i download a file from google drive will the owner exactly who it is or will the owner see who it is i'm not too sure no the owner won't see you if they, if it's shared with you then you should be able to download it sometimes when you share files you could stop people from downloading it which is possible so i don't know um dwelling in the past one here all right okay good trisha henry can you explain again how to hide photos they are taking up my storage awesome um thought you were about to say the opposite about the dark sheets and slide but because my gc get filthy oh yeah 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 cool all right explain the hiding photos okay so for trisha henry the photos that you have they are going to be somewhere wherever right so let's say you have the photos inside the google drive if you go to photos.google.com and when you go to photos.google.com it will tell you the photos that you have and you could um all you have to do is go to um upload and then you say upload from google drive so let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that All right so when you go to your um when you go to your um google photos you will see upload and you can upload photos from your computer and those will go up for free because they will store it in high definition or you can click from drive when you click from drive it will you'll be able to go into your google drive folder and upload the photos there and save them if you need to use them in the future so like those assignments i gave two weeks ago um three weeks ago and whatnot that you're not going to look back at the photos because well you, you already marked them and that kind of stuff you can but you want to keep them just in case right so you could just go to photos.google.com click upload from google drive and it will convert the photos from a storage version which is counting against your storage and it'll convert it to a free version which is stored on photos.google.com and then you then you will see a um you'll see a little bar go down a little bit you'll see the um you see the bar go down and you will see that now the google drive number will go down and the photos will go up right all right um right for those of you all that came into the live you could click like um i posted it as another slides when i tried to edit it it's saying take out from trash can you explain why it's mirror mirage because you probably deleted the slides when you when you create it if you um if you stop creating it and you close it off it'll probably go in the trash so you have to make sure that when you're creating it that you stay on it all the time okay all right so that should be good for the first part of this all right so time to hear from granny of all the girls she like they want to do zoom me tell they want to do zoom i don't know about this zoom thing you know for years but on this zoom I don't test computer hard, you know. Test hard. I'm sorry, boy. Yeah. Come to me, how to put on the Zoom, please. Oh, gosh. All you have to do is just click the, um, the, the, No, the, don't the, give me instructions. Come and show me. Oh, I gosh. Oh, gosh. Just quick. This is now the room. All they do is just come and show me. Well, take your time now, Granny. Um, just put the meeting code and, and, and press the press password. It. No, the meeting what? code. I don't understand what you're saying. I have a meeting code and a password. Come and show me what to do. Oh gosh, it's every minute so you have to be calling but me. But what is this thing? Look, just put any meeting code and the password. And look, I, I think, I show you no, what I'm going upside down. 
You see me? I play this every day, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't I won't find somebody to help you. Right? You give up? I'm all, I should have given up on you a long time. I never give up. Of course, of course. Thank you very much. Good. Miss Pool Douglas, Miss P. Douglas, I I think I was trying to answer. To use Google Drive, you need to use a Gmail account. There's no way you could use Google Drive without a Gmail account. Yeah. All right. So we're moving on now to um to an app called Kahoot and y'all are going to play a game with me as a student. So I'm going to show you um going to show you um how to get to Kahoot, which is pretty simple. You go to Kahoot, K H O T dot com, or you could Google Kahoot, K A H W O T, and you will see Kahoot.com, right? So when you click on Kahoot.com it will give you a page with all the different stuff that's available all you really want to be concerned about is login right or sign up so sign up so you want to go to the top right hand side and click sign up and as usual you're just using your gmail account and you'll sign in but you want to sign in as a teacher because well you're a teacher this is for teachers if it's students and students creating their own account that's not a problem um so we click on teacher and then it'll ask you, describe your workplace. Is it a school? Is it higher education? Is it school administration? Is it, is it business? They will have different quizzes depending, right? But we're choosing school. And when we choose school, it'll ask you to continue with Google or continue with Microsoft. Or you could create your own user accounts. Um, continue with Google will just send you to a Google account. And when you go to a Google account, it will... Um, it will sign you in, right? Good. So once you're signed in, it's going to look like this. So the sign-in process is pretty simple. It's just a Gmail address and no problems there. It's going to look like this. And you're going to be in Kahoot.com. And um, I'm trying to zoom in so that you'll see. Right? Right. So you can create your custom quizzes if you want. By going to the create button on the top right hand side. And... Um, when you click on the top right hand side and click create, you will get the ability to create a brand new quiz and you can literally make it how you want. So you could create it from scratch or you could create from a template, right? So I'm going to choose code for formative assessment or you could have one for getting to know your teacher, whichever one you want, right? So I'm going to click code for formative assessment and on the left hand side, it has Question one. Question one, it says, determine the type of knowledge you are trying to access. Replace this question with a simple introductory question, right? So I'm going to change the question to, um, what is the speed of light? All right. Now, if you, if you play close attention to the top here, you have bold. You could bold things. You could italicize things. You could put superscript and subscript. And you could put in mathematical symbols if you want. Any symbols that you want to put. So let's say we want to put a special character of, um, I don't know, sense, right? And if I want to put in a math question, I could click on math question and I will try to put in um, 3 divided by 2, 2 over 2 plus 6 uh, over 6 plus 7 um, over 5 and then I just click insert and it will put in the math question for me right so I could put in um I could put in any type of question I want and the question editor is pretty simple and then you have the ability to put in an image if you want to put in an image you could put an image and then you can give a time limit for the question 
So if I say this question is supposed to be 60 seconds, I want to give it 60 seconds, I'll choose 60 seconds. And how much points is it worth? The points part, I'll show you all just now, right? Because the points is really cool. Because the, the students could kind of have a little competition against each other. And then I put the choices. So plausible answer number one is um, 3 by 10 to the 8. Same thing I could do here, right? 10 to the 8. I could highlight the 8 and put the um, x squared there, 10 to the 8. And take off the superscript and then meters per second, right? So 3 by 10 to 8 meters per second and then I'll put number. And it kind of tell you plausible answer, correct answer, incorrect answer, and silly answer. So you know normally when you're setting up a multiple choice, you usually set it up in a, in a way where you have a, you have a good answer, but it's not good enough. Then you have the correct answer, which is the correct answer, which I should have put there. Then the silly answer will be like a banana. Um, and then incorrect answer will be something wrong. All right, good. So I create that, and then I could do that for any other question, right? So the process of creating a quiz, just like quizzes, um, you have some sort of um, some sort of ability to create creative quiz. Now, one of the one of the cool things is image reveal. If you if you um put the image inside, it will you could add an image, remove image image library you can find any image you want inside here and um if you want you could buy youtube link also you could find a link on youtube or you could find a video on youtube and it will open up you a bunch of videos so you could actually put youtube videos inside here and ask questions about it if you want but these questions are fairly straightforward right now, this is the cool part here. Watch this here. You see this part here called Import Spreadsheet? Right. You could prepare the whole quiz in advance using Microsoft Excel, and, it's and it'll be an Excel as file, and it'll give you a template, right? Um, you could download the template and... Oh, wait, just now. Before I show you the template. There's a part called Question Bank where you could click on Question Bank and you could find any question. So you could import quizzes, import questions just like quizzes. So, um, when was um, Trinidad made independent? Let's test this thing out. Okay, when was World War II? I'll just put that for now. Right. So look, when was World War II? So I could import a question from the question bank. When did World War II end? Whatever, whatever, whatever. And I click add. Once I click add, this is the same import. Um, this is the same import possibility. And now I have I have three questions. I have the first question, what is the speed of light, which is what I tried to do um, on my own. Then I have at the bottom here, when was World War II? My 10 questions, right? So I could click on the question bank and import quest and import a, import a, like a, a question from anywhere. And you can literally search for whatever you want to look for. So um, if I want to search for um, cell structure, so I'll find the cell structure movements, and I can just go through all the questions and choose one because remember this is public and anybody can get access to it, right? So you could pull any question from anywhere and the question bank will basically give you the choice of whatever. So if you want to do simple addition, you could find questions that were already created. And the simple addition questions will be like this. And you just go through all the all the addition questions and you just add them. You just choose which one you want to add, right? Basically that simple. Now for advanced people who want to do a little more, you can click import spreadsheet. And it gives you a template, right? So I'm going to download the template. I'm going to show you how you could create a template and after. After you fill it out. So watch this. 
When I open up the template, it's going to give me a spreadsheet that opens up in Microsoft Excel. And literally, all I have to do is if I have questions and answers already that I probably did before in life, I don't know, I could fill out this spreadsheet. So you'll see the, the spreadsheet has um, question one. And I type the question here, what spreadsheet tools can be used for this? And I put the four options. And then the four options, after the four options, I'll have the choice to put, um, I'll have the choice to put the time limit. So I could click here and click the drop down arrow and choose what time limit I want, which will be in seconds. So five seconds, 90 seconds, 120 seconds, no problem there. And the correct answers will be one, two, three, or four. So whichever order I put it in, so I'll put one, two, three, four. So I'll say, okay, the correct answer for this one is number one. So I'll leave that as one, right? Right. And then when I put number one there, and I could fill out this whole spreadsheet if I want. If I want. Or you could just do the easy route and just kind of teach stuff. Take take stuff from the um not teach, um get stuff from the from the actual app. And then when I want to, when I'm finished with this, I save it. And then I go here and I click import spreadsheet. And then I click select the file. And if I select the file, wherever it is, blah, 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 I'll click upload. And then it will import it into the quiz. Right? So that's, um, that's basically it. So then I click, when I click done, I would name it. Um, for whatever class it is. So let's say it's um standard five math quiz, whatever. And then I click done. And what is going to happen is I'm going to have the quiz in my dashboard thingy on the left hand side here. So you would see um the little dashboard here will show you my cahoots. Just uh, I zoomed in a little too much. Right. So now I've done it. Now the next thing I have to do is host a Kahoot. So I'm going to click host Kahoot. And then it'll ask me which one do I want to use. And you can see the, the same one I just created here, which is um Standard 5 Math Quiz, and you'll see my name here, Mr. Charles TT. Zero plays because nobody has played it anytime. So, um, then I click play. When I click play, it will ask me, do I want to do it for a virtual classroom, which is um, at the point in time, or do I want to assign it? Now, assigning it will give them the link, and then they will do the quiz at any point in time, and then their marks will come back. The only problem with this is it doesn't link with Google Classroom very well so it uses a code so whereas with quizzes quizzes links with google classroom and it gets it in the background and it automatically goes on as an assignment and all that stuff with this one you have to do a little bit of legwork where you could assign the quiz so you can click assign and it will create the um it will create the the task and then you could share the link So it will get it will take me to this point here and it will ask me, okay, from um, standard five math quiz, challenge ends in three days, and I, I want to share this URL of them and the game pin. So you will have to go here, copy the URL and send it to Google Classroom. Now it does have Google Classroom here, so I could click Google Classroom and it will try to link it, but it doesn't link as good as quizzes, even though some people have quizzes issues. But I can link it to Google Classroom. You see that? Wait, it updates. Look, 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 look. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, exciting moment here. It has linked with Google Classroom a lot better because I think quizzes give some problem when linked with Google Classroom. But I could choose my class now. So I could choose a class and then click choose action and choose create assignment. Hey, look, look, look. All right. So you can create a Kahoot quiz and you could share it with the class and it will go straight to... It will create an assignment one time for the exact date and all that stuff. Wow. Okay. I am happy. I didn't know this was working before. Because last time, last time I looked at it, it wasn't working very well. So you can link this with Google Classroom. So if you create it and you create a quiz um, 
for them to do it on their own time, which is like asynchronous, you could just click Google Classroom here and link it. And you could also link it to Microsoft Teams. OMG. Look, 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 look. And you could send it to Facebook and whatnot. All right. I'm happy. This is good. This is good to know. Right. So then you'll probably just come back here with your user account and then you'll be able to see what each other did. So that's good. That's good for me. Okay. So now I'm going to show you, I'm going to play one live with you, all right? So I'm going to go to um, Discover and I'm going to see if I can discover a quiz. I'm going to look for the Caribbean. So let's all do a quiz together, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to prove to you that it's not going to cause you any, any problem at all. Unless my internet decides to fight me tonight. But please, don't. Alright, so looking, I, I went to Discover, right? And um, in Discover, you could search for quizzes that have been made already. So I'm searching for quizzes about the Caribbean. Um, let's try... Okay, Caribbean Awareness Quiz 3. No, all right, let's do Caribbean Facts. So everybody, everybody on the live right now, I'm going to share this quiz with you all and um, I'm going to, let's, let's play it. So I'm going to click play and I'm going to click teach because it's going to be done live. And I'm going to share the code with you. So there are two ways that it could be done. It could be done in team mode or it could be done in classic mode, right? So just choose classic mode. Classic mode is everybody as an individual. So I'm going to click classic. And now GIMP is there. Come on, GIMP. All right, so this is the GIMP. Everybody, join. If you have a phone, just go to coach.it. Um, K-H-O-T dot it. I'll put the link in the um. Yeah. Go to your phone now. Or your device. Or your computer. Or where it is. I'm taking off the music. Because the music is annoying. Join now. I need some players. I need some players. Alright. Yeah. This is. This is exactly what I thought to happen. Yeah. This is what happens when you do things on the internet. Yeah. Okay, all right. I am going to do it in um somebody spam the quiz. Yeah. All right. Um, let me see how, how I could do this while without causing any issues. Could I do it from my phone? Yeah, I could do it from my phone. Okay. Um, if I do it from my phone, would y'all be able to see it?
All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let my mods join the game, right? Just because I could trust them. Because if I release the game code, it will um somebody will end up spamming the chat again, and I will end up spamming the game, and then I will end up having a problem. So we're going to test my mods and see how good they are. Just give me one second. If you all have any questions, you can ask. All right, cool. So, suit, Caribbean. All oh, right, okay. So the people that are in the, um, The people that are in the teacher's chat. I could put it inside in, in, in the WhatsApp chat that I have. Yeah, I could put that there. Okay, so I'm gonna put the code, I go I'll go and put the codes in the um in the WhatsApp groups that I have, right? Just to get people on the inside. Because I really want this to work. I really do. I'm creating the pin. All right, mods, look out for it in the chat. And um, people that in the... In the other group, look out for there to teachers group. All right, so the people are in the teachers group and the people are in the mod group, you could you could put it there. If I put the link in the chat here, it will um it will get spammed because it's a public link and you will have um bots that will try it um that will try to take it over. So I'm going to share my phone my phone screen with y'all. Phone. Oh, Phone screen. So y'all can see what it looks like from the teacher's perspective, right? That's really what I want to do. Um, yeah, you could come out of the arm. Um, you could come out of, if you come out of the live, that's okay, because I know you're still here. <laughs> Don't worry. All right, cool. Okay, so I'm not sharing the game pin. All right, so so far I have seven people on the inside. All right, good. Okay, so this is what it looks like from a teacher's perspective, right? So far, I have 10 people are going and play. And if you are on, if you're on the live um, and you want to play, go ahead. It's just a Caribbean quiz that asks Caribbean questions. But what will happen when you start the quiz, every, everybody is going to get a chance to see the, um, the, the answers, well, to see the choices and we'll play, right? So this is me showing it from a teacher's perspective. This is me showing it from a teacher's perspective, right? So everybody that wants to join is on the inside. Well, the people that are in the teachers group that I have on WhatsApp and my mods that I have on um on on the separate WhatsApp groups, I just sent you all the link, the the um, code separately, right? Okay, so thirteen people, thirteen people is good enough, right? So this is what your children are going to have to do. Um, they're going to have to click on it and they're going to have to join. Now, if you send it through Google Classroom, it's going to create an assignment and they will, um, 
If you're using it with students, no, they don't have to create an account. The students just have to put in the PIN and they have to create a name. So you'd probably tell the students, um, put in your name and um, you could track. You could track it, right? So you need to have some sort of maturity in the students so that they will know that they have to put in their correct name. Because these quizzes here, they may be able to be used for assessments if you have a real discipline class, but they could also be used for fun. So let's start, right? So it's Caribbean Islands, and as a teacher, I'm going to see the question, and the first question is going to be shown to the people. So this is what they are going to see. And you'll see the time come down by 20 seconds. And then they will choose their answer. Right? So right now four people have answered, five, five answers. And after the time has elapsed, you'll see how many answers are given, and then you will see this. Right? So you'll see how many people got it correct, which is the four. Well no, which is the, the four people chose Trinidad. Nobody chose Grenada, nobody chose Haiti, and four people chose Barbados. And then now, I as a teacher, I'm going to click next. And you will see the scoreboard go up. So right now, Berlin is on top. So you could kind of, you know, gas up your class while you're in your Zoom meeting. And you'd be like, hey, class, look who's in front and whatnot. And you could share your screen. And you could share your screen. You won't see, you won't see your name on the screen. They'll only show you the top five. So you had to make it in the top five to be seen on the screen. So you can kind of be like, hey, class, look, Verilyn is on top. Let's see who could beat her, that kind of thing. Um, next one, which island is not a part of the Lesser Antilles? And you see there's a little picture of the map there, um, whatnot. So now one person has answered so far, as you can see on the bottom on the right-hand side. Two people answered so far. And imagine your class, you know, and they're on their device, and they're watching your screen on Zoom, and they're saying, hey, I wonder why blah, 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 and they're feeling good about themselves that, you know, they're smart and they're getting the answer correct. So then it will show you who got the answer correct and then you click next and then you will see the scores automatically go up. So look, Jay Peters is now on top and Ren is in close behind and Officer Pork is right there. Next question. You have 30 seconds to answer. What nickname does the island of St. Kitts go by? Sweet City, Sugar City, Candy City, or Rock City? You're not seeing the question. Oh, yeah, sorry, my bad. Right. Questions there, right? Right, what nickname does the island of St. Kitts go by? And then time is up, and then you'll see who chose it, and then I go to next and see. All right, Jay Peters, you're on fire, boy. You're on fire. Let's go again. Which of these is not a title for a group of islands in the Caribbean? Windward Islands, Leeward Islands, Weeward Islands, and Greater Antilles. Come on, kids, you can figure this out. 15 seconds left. You know, teachers, like, you know, you have to keep gassing up children and, you know, something. If you only see the question on your teacher's screen, um, I don't know what you all see. You all not see any questions? If you're using it on a phone um, and a mobile browser, um, right, so that's question five out of twenty. Which of these is the biggest island in the Caribbean? You can't see the questions on your phone.
All right, so I guess the teacher might have to read them out for you, and you will choose which one. All right, if you're not seeing it, then you will just call the answers in order, and then they will choose one. So we could try that. So let me try it now. What is the capital of St. Lucia? Maki, Nassau, Castries, or Pastries? Oh, the reason you're seeing time up is because I am, um, my life has a short delay. All right, all right, I understand what's the problem now, I understand what's the problem. You're all hearing me after the question actually comes up in real time. So, that, that's really the issue. Okay, I'm sorry about that. The live, the live normally has like a 10 second delay. So, you will get that, you will get that issue. Shirel Lochan, you've not seen the questions where on your screen? Yeah, basically, this will work. Alright, so which island is Nicki Minaj from? Tobago, Jamaica, Barbados, or Trinidad? Um, you will have that, you'll have that little lag issue there. But this is basically what will happen. So for demonstration purposes. Alright, some of you all see any questions. Oh, you're not seeing it yet. I've seen colored boxes. All right, yeah. If you've seen colored boxes, then you'll just have to read all the questions for them, right? So I'm going to just skip to the end so that you all could see how the winner's, um, the winner's table is going to look like. Right, now, when I did this in my class, we were doing it live in a meeting. So it was, I was, um, it was synced. Yo, I, I skip and drew, I skip and drew. Because I want to finish, I wanted to see what the end looked like. Um, Sarah, if you're entering after the quiz started, you won't get in. No, if it's a live quiz, you won't be able to get in. Um. You won't be able to get in. I'll skip and draw the questions. So the live quizzes, this will be for things like you're doing like form meeting in um when you have form period and you want to do a fun a fun activity or something. The ones that you assign separately, which will be the asynchronous ones, you can assign that uh, inside the Google Classroom because well it works in Google Classroom now. So I just want to show you all what the end of it looks like. Right, so when I go to the last question, it will show me the leaderboard. And look at the leaderboard. Well, not the leaderboard, the, the winner. Right, so you see the podium now. And you will see whoever came first, second, or third. And then it will put the name and a little thing like that. And that's what the children will see. Okay. And then it will show the runners up who come who came in fourth and fifth. So basically, um, if you want to do the, the live one, you could do it live. And have people enter at the exact point in time, and they will see their their points going up. But it's not going to be it's not going to be perfect because everybody will have different internet connections or whatnot. But there's some of y'all who have the ability to get it done, so you could try that. But if you want to do it asynchronously, you can because well, it works. It works at Google Classroom now. So this is a this is an alternative to quizzes. I will. I'll start to recommend people using this um, alongside quizzes. So if quizzes not working, Kahoot could work, right? Because that's um that's basically how how what we're looking at. All right. So 
I thank you very much for your time. Remember, um, anybody who is looking for devices that they're not sure will work, um, you could check the description of this video and you will have, you'll be able to see devices. Links in the video description to the playlist for all the, all the um, lives I've done so far. I think this is it, so I'm going on two months. Um, yes, sorry about the delay. I didn't really think that the YouTube delay will cause an issue with the quizzes quiz, but that's okay. Um, at least you know that you can do it in your class with the, um, with the Kahoot quiz, sorry. At least you know you can do it in your class and you have the ability to do it live or you can do it, um, you can do it um, asynchronously and send it to them as an assignment. So either way, right? So two things you learned tonight, which is how to clear up your Gmail storage because it makes life a whole lot easier when you're using a Google Classroom and you, you could upload stuff and you delete all the things that are not necessary. And the second thing would be playing around a little bit with Kahoots and see how you could get your quizzes, um, get your quizzes in a gear. Remember, everything won't be perfect, for sure, for sure, for sure, but we're not trying to be perfect because we are we are, we are placed in an imperfect situation and what we're trying to do is to make the best out of the imperfect situation that we are in. So that's why I'm doing this, trying to make sure that we, you know, help people out so that if you are a teacher and you really want to try hard to make this thing work, I just want to give you tools and we will fight it and try it. If you're a teacher that, don't want, that doesn't want to try hard to make things work and you just want to mark time and go through the paces, well, that's your choice. But I'm really out here for teachers that care and teachers that really, really, really want to try. I want to make it easy for you to try different things. And who knows? Maybe some of y'all will get cahoots to work. Some of y'all do quizzes. Some of, some of y'all will use um, Google Classroom. Doesn't matter, really. We're just looking for all the different ways to get education done in a better way online because we are forced to do it, mm -hmm. literally. All right? So don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to sub subscribe. Every single Saturday at 8 p.m., I'll be here doing things. Um, and probably next week, Saturday, I'm going to deal with a little, bit, a little bit of online safety for children because everybody has a device now. So, thanks a lot, guys. Have a great night. I will... Um, um, I will see you all next week. Yeah. Bye-bye.